knowing that in the days and weeks ahead, she would need surgery and chemotherapy just to stay alive. And so there they were, four people, a woman and her son, a man who was searching for answers and meaning and hope, and a woman of faith who was clinging to the God that she trusted so much. That night, God had brought them all right here to the manger. Conversation. 
And during that time, the mother had told Mary about her son's need for surgery to be able to hear again. And she explained to her about the article that she had read about a surgeon here in town that was doing the operation on children her son's age, the reason that she came here in the first place. And as she talked, Mary listened intently, and after the conversation was over, she disappeared and went into the crowd. The newspaper reporter, well, he did what any good newspaper reporter would do. He was standing right by, and he was eavesdropping, and heard every single word that was being said. And although he considered himself to be hard-nosed and objective, he couldn't wait to track Mary down to talk to her. You see, he maybe knew Mary better than anyone else, because you see, Mary was his wife. And she had a busy and demanding schedule as a surgeon at the local hospital. And yes, she might have guessed it. She was the very surgeon that the little boy's mother had come to the square to find that night. Quite a coincidence, huh? Well, the newspaper reporter could have waited to go and find her. And as he chased Mary down, he looked at her and he said, So what are you going to do? And she looked at him and said and smiled, I'm going to give that little boy just the surgery that he needs. Even if it means postponing your own treatment, he asked. I mean, he couldn't believe what she was considering doing, that she would put herself at risk and sacrifice herself for someone who was a complete stranger. But then Mary looked at her husband, and she said, 